I'm Nina Petrakieva and uh, I work in the Learning Development Center in the School of Field and Life Sciences in Glasgow Caledonian University. And uh, today I wanted to talk to you about collaborative writing. This particular picture really illustrates quite well what um, is collaborative writing and especially in the age where we can communicate through technology, collaborative writing becomes now one of the most important aspects of working together. Thank you Simon Ray for the picture. When people work on um, a shared document, before the availability of open platforms, the constant exchange of that document, the multiple versions available, or the split up of the work between different people has always resulted in a very, very difficult to merge together document that will look like one piece of writing. With the um, availability now of online platforms where all people can access the same document and work even at the same time, that task is now a lot easier. And there are a few good platforms you could use and uh, it's always a good idea to consider the pros and cons of each one and what most people will be familiar with. So you reduce the period of um, exploration and you can concentrate on the work. The two most commonly used platforms are Google Docs and Office 365. They both offer great functionality and they both will do the job. It is really a case of which one you have available, which one you're used to and um, negotiate with the rest of the team that is going to be involved. But both of them will do um, a good job in actually allowing you to create um, a good collaborative document. And when I'm saying document, it could be a presentation, it could be a Word document, it could be a, a spreadsheet or any other product like that, that you want to work together with the rest of the team to create. Once you create your document, you will need to decide also um, what access are you allowing everyone to this document. You could create a completely open document that anyone that knows the link can access and can edit. Uh, if, if the purpose is to engage as many people as possible and to spread the access to this document, then that's the best way to do it because you don't need to know who is accessing, you don't need to give them specific permission. Uh, you can just share a link and you can ask other people to share it and that way everyone can access this document. However, if you are planning on creating um, a good cohesive document, it's probably best to restrict your access to a group of people that will be given uh, access, full access to this document and uh, you can work together collaboratively and responsibly on the final output. So open access is good for sourcing information, for gathering opinions, but not really for creating a final, nicely cohesive um, document. I want to show you how you can create a document in both platforms, in Google Docs and Office 365, and how you can share it with others. So I'm going to show you first um, Office 365, if you already have uh, an account, it's uh, simply logging in, accessing Office 365, and from there you can choose what type of document you're creating, Word document, PowerPoint presentation, or any other. I'm going to create now Word document, so I'm just clicking on the Word tile, and that will open the online version of Word um, from Office 365. I'm going to start a brand new document. And once you're in, you will see the functionality is pretty much the same as you would have in Word without any of the additional special features, but all the basic functionality you will need to create a good document will be available in the online version. You can change the name of this document from the middle of the top here. And to give permission to people, you just click on the share button in the top right corner and you can specify who gets access by simply sending them an email. You literally just um, using the email account. You type in the emails here and always make sure you require sign in so they have an account. They need to have uh, an account to get the best functionality and you can click share. 
you can specify what access they have. Will it be editor? So they have full access to the document and they can actually amend the content or you can allow them simply to be viewers so they can read the document, but they cannot edit. So if you're sending this document to someone um, to give their opinion on it, you can just access, uh, give them access uh, through the uh, view option. And then by clicking share, you send that invitation and they will get access. If you want to create an open document where everyone can access it, instead of inviting people to access, you just use the option to get a link and it will create this link and all you need to do is share it and everyone who has that link will be able to access. And again, you can specify different um, access to this document. You can have um, no signing required so anyone can um, open it and start editing. Um, account in your organization if there is restricted um, access. And again, you have the option to view only. And then you can start writing your document. The other platform I wanted to show you is Google Docs. Google Docs can be accessed by simply going to drive.google.com link and then logging into your Google account. From there, it will open up your Google Drive and if you have uploaded any files uh, already or have created files, they will be already available here. To access the option to create a new file, you simply click on the new button in the top left corner and that's going to give you an option to start a new document. So I'm just going to use Google Docs and it's created a new document and again, by default, it's not going to have a name, so it's a good idea to actually create a good name. So I'm just going to call it shared doc again. And to invite people, you just click on the share link at the top corner. And again, you can send them uh, an email to give them access. From the option right next to it, you can choose, will they be allowed to edit this document or they can just comment. So they, they still have some input, but without editing the content itself, or they can just be viewers. And at the top corner of this little dialog box, you will have an option to create a shareable link again for completely open access. One of the great features of both platforms is that you don't need to save anything you do in this document will automatically be saved uh, in the storage space. So if you are using, for example, Office 365, anything you do in the document will automatically be saved in your OneDrive, which is part of your Office 365 account. Anything you create in Google Docs will automatically be saved in your Google Drive. The difference between the two is with Google Docs, any changes that you make, any, um, any new saves, they will be available to be viewed in Google Drive. Any changes you make will be saved as a new version of this file. And those different versions will be available for everyone that can access these documents to see. So something to be aware of if you don't want people to be able to see previous versions of your sharing document that had sensitive information in it, the previous versions of this document are available. To access the previous versions, simply go to the file menu of Google Docs and you will see C revision history. And from there, you can access all the different previous versions. So any back change, it's the same in regularly and any back change will be available to be seen. With Office 365, the availability is not that straightforward. It does save previous versions of this document. It does save regularly. However, only the person that has created this document first, only they will have access to the previous versions of this file. So any collaborators that have been added later, they will not have access to the previous versions. So something to be aware of when you're choosing between the two platforms. And then simply right click on the file. And from the menu that will open, you will see version history if you are the person that has created this file. And a few more things I wanted to note about the, the writing process itself. First of all, when you're writing something, you get to invest in what you're doing 
you put a lot of effort into creating the text that you do and if someone goes and edits it afterwards the first reaction is usually that of annoyment why would someone dare edit something that you have written when you spend so such a long time creating if you don't invest yourself so much into your writing if you treat whatever you write as a draft then the fact that someone has gone and edited they've done you a favor and they've actually polished your document so if you treat it that way it will make it a lot easier to let go of that possessiveness of the text you've written and the same goes for all the other contributors a lot of people are afraid to go and edit in case they offend someone but if everyone else is also just creating drafts then what you do to their text you're actually helping them so if everyone has that attitude whenever you create a new piece of writing always write it as a draft and don't think about that this is the final product and this is going to be what is going to end up in the document in the final outcome document always treat it as a draft and then every next person who goes in will polish it and in the end you will also achieve that amalgamation of styles and the document will read like one piece of writing instead of multiple authors they will not be visible they will not be detectable that there's been multiple authors so whenever you go inside and start editing someone else's text if you're not sure if you want to delete that particular piece of writing or you want to amend it too much um, if you're not sure you may have not understood what they actually meant the best thing to do instead of deleting it which again could be restored because there's previous versions of this file the best thing to do is just copy this text to the end of the document just create a separate section of the document leftovers extras whatever you want to call it and just make sure there is a full copy of the work unedited work in there and then within the main body of the text you can rewrite it and if the next person who goes in doesn't agree with what you have done the original text is still available in the document itself and can be uh, copied across again so that little end part of the document which obviously you shouldn't forget to delete um, is important to create as a repository of the unedited bits of text or something that may be useful maybe not if you're not quite sure if you're going to use it just leave it at the end of the document while you concentrate on the actual um, document to polish it up and make sure it flows nicely it is also extremely important to establish a good communication system with the rest of the team if you rely on external channels of communications like face-to-face -face chats or Facebook groups or emails you will end up disconnecting the communication from the actual work and there will be a possibility quite strong possibility that someone will not have checked some of the recent communication they have been missed in communication and that lack of consistency of communication may result in a much more difficult process of writing the final document so instead you can use the features inside the platform to communicate both platforms, Google Docs and Office 365, have a chat option. The moment someone else accesses the document and they are at the same time in the same document, a chat option will appear in the top right corner and you can just click and chat with them live. However, this chat will not be saved. This is just a live chat with everyone that is currently in the document. So don't leave any important communication in there, hoping that the next person who comes in can see it or next time when you log in, you will see it. If someone logs in the document a bit later, they will not see the previous chat that has happened up until that point. So everyone only sees the chat from the point when they actually log into the document. So as much as chat is useful, instead of phone call conversation um, to discuss something, it's not reliable in terms of having long term access to this information. Instead of that, what you can do is use the comments option. So the comments, the same way you would use them in Word, are extremely easy to use. Literally just highlight a bit of the text and you can either right click or you will see an option popping up to um, insert comment or usually from the insert menu as well and you can leave a comment to a particular part of the text and then other contributors can reply to that comment so you can have a contextualized conversation that remains inside the document 
and remains in context and anyone who access it later this will be available for them to see as well obviously when you finalize your document make sure you delete all of those uh, comments but while you're still creating the process of creation that is a very good way to communicate about the particular aspects of the document itself if it's generic communication that you need, a simple notice to everyone informing them of something or planning the future work of this document, so a comment will not be appropriate because it will not be contextualized. The easiest thing to do is create the very first page of this document to be a notice board and literally write notices to each other in there. Imagine it like a real life notice board so whoever accesses the file the first thing they see is this notice board so there would be no additional need to go and check for any new emails or any communications in external channels it's all in the document obviously everyone can edit the notice board and um, it will not be easy to see who has written the particular note so make sure you put your name probably in brackets is the easiest option or initials um, that is who is said that particular statement or has left that particular note but that probably is the easiest way to communicate using this notice board at the beginning of the document so a few simple things to do go choose your platform share it with others communicate through the platform don't be afraid to edit everyone else's work but if you're not sure just leave it at the end of the document and just go and explore it